Good morning, afternoon, good evening, whenever you're watching this is Collider's Thrones Talk, and we are here to break down, react, review episode two of season seven, Stormborn. I am joined by some weary travelers here today. <laughs> we are coming back from San Diego Comic Con. We have Rachel Cushing. Are you awake? Uh, getting there. John Roca. <laughs> yeah, let's get it on. I'm always awake. You're awake. <laughs> Lannister, son. Ooh, Dennis Zen. Yeah, I'm back. We're back. Yes. We, we got to experience a lot of Game of Thronesness at Comic Con, the Game of Thrones experience, which we have a video of. Yeah. We, we saw the panel. We did. We got saw, a bunch of free stuff. We got, we got some swag <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, if you want to go see on Collider Video, Dennis and I got to experience Game of Thrones and record it. We had a lot of fun uh, being uh, Egret and Jon Snow. Yes. We, we, you and I are closer now. Yeah, we had a love story happen. <laughs> Dennis, how did you learn to kiss me down there? Uh, and uh, we had a lot of fun. Did you guys have a lot of fun over San Diego Comic Con? Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. You definitely. got to experience Game of Thrones as well, Rachel. Yeah, but I didn't get to do the press experience. I did the stand in line for seven hours experience, but made lots of new friends because we were all in it together yeah. and um, getting to go through that experience was a lot of fun. Did so, you feel like a free folk? Yeah, the, the just small folk are just getting yeah. shuttled around and like yeah. <laughs> moving 10 feet at a time. So guys, we have a very cool and exciting episode to break down. I'll say it right now, I love this episode, Stormborn. This was, uh, I, I love season seven so far and I know some people already, I've heard some, well, it already started slow, it already, look, if you, let's talk about it, let's debate. I love this episode, so let's go around quickly, we'll get into the lead story. Rachel, overall thoughts on this episode? I thought it was great too. I, I mean, we hit the ground running here, like they promised, and that it was fast paced, but they didn't forget the character stuff, which is the stuff that I love. We got a battle, mm -hmm. but I'm telling you, a lot of those scenes, the character driven scenes, were my favorites, yeah. um, like, like last week. So, really excited that they're maintaining that balance while also, you know, moving at a fairly breakneck speed. Very fast paced, but you're great. Mm -hmm. So far, some of the one on ones, it's yeah. like season two to me had some of the best one on one yeah. conversations. We're getting a lot of that that I love here. John Roca, what are your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. I love the episode, too. And I, I don't understand what Game of Thrones show they've been watching this whole time uh, for the last <laughs> seven seasons. Like, they don't go around. This is not an act. It's not a Michael Bay movie. Like, yeah. every episode is not a Michael Bay movie. Yeah. They take their time. One of the joys that people love about this show is the fact that they take their time, like, like Rachel said, building the character, having these scenes. The fact that we have uh, Elena, Alaria, uh, you know, Yara, Yara, uh, Yara and, and Danny all in the same, finally all in the same room discussing political strategy or military strategy is brilliant. Yeah. And so those kinds of things get me excited because that to me is action. Action isn't just swinging swords and uh, sea battles. It is, it's also what's going on in the interpersonal connections, in the interpersonal conversations. That's action as yeah. well. Good thoughts. I absolutely love that. Dennis, overall? Yeah, yeah I mean, I quite enjoyed the episode. It, it, it wasn't, like you said, action, action, yeah. but it, it is fast-paced moving because you mm -hmm. already have certain things I thought they were going to maybe lay the groundwork a little longer with. You already have Daenerys calling for Jon Snow. Yeah. She just landed. Yeah. You know, she just yeah. landed in Dragonstone. She's already calling for Jon Snow. So right. those are things I thought maybe they would have drawn out a little longer. So in this episode, they're already talking about those things. Yeah, and maybe in a longer season, that yeah. might have been what, what happened here. I overall, like I said, I love this episode. It's like an all-star game. We're finally seeing players from different teams <laughs> in the same room together, and that's always kind of the fun, the crossover stuff there. But the big story, I think we want to start in Dragonstone because uh, that led to the big thing at the end. Uh, and we always like to go into the big story and the big theme. Danny is in charge. She's at the painted table and she has a lot of great advisors around her. She drilled Varys, which I love that scene. I want to talk a little bit, Rachel, about Varys. Now, I think in, in the real world, Danny should have done this on a ship. Unless yeah, she yeah. wanted, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Unless she wanted to make sure she got to Dragonstone first. Thanks yeah. for your help, Varys. What do you think about this scene and Varys's answers? There, there are a few things they could have pre-planned, but then we yeah. wouldn't have gotten the the gorgeous scene at the painted table. So we can forgive yeah. that. But, I mean, Danny has actually has come a long way. I, I give her crap sometimes because I feel yeah. like she doesn't always learn the lessons, but I feel like in this scene and then the the next one she has with her whole council, she's showing that. You know, she has learned a little bit about people. I think it's Tyrion's influence, and I think that that's great. But I loved the steel in her voice, but Varys standing his ground, Tyrion in between them going, guys, careful now, like, like let's all be friends. And 
both of again, it's like the John Sansa stuff. Both of them have a point, you know. But Varys's speech towards the end about, you know, I came from nothing, and so I represent the people, the people that you say you want to win over the hearts of, and for that reason, I will be loyal to you. He says, I choose you. And when yeah. do lowborn common folks say or get to do things like that? And I love that dynamic. Right. And um, and and but of course, you know, at the end of it, if you betray <laughs> betray me i yeah. will burn you alive i'm like shades of Eris a little right. there but that's the dragon she's and got a, a name and legacy to protect exactly. Dennis, going to you on that one there i like how varus at first was like oh they tell stories and she's like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. i heard that <laughs> i heard that what do you think about this yeah i mean i initially had to get over the fact that they, they were on these ships for weeks <laughs> and never she never mentioned this all waited till they got yeah. there so after i got over that yes I like this scene, especially because it's consistent with who Varys is. You see all the way back in season one when Ned is locked up, he's like, who do you serve? And yeah. he says, I serve the realm. He's, his whole thing is about doing it for the people. And so what, all the stuff that he told uh, Daenerys is all consistent with who his character is. And, and then Daenerys is able to accept that and say, just with a little alternative version, like, hey, right. if you think I'm, I, I'm effing up, yeah. let me know. And then we can work it out before you like go go behind my back. Right, and that and that's good, John. And, yeah. and from this, we also going to lead into the painted table with you leading that discussion with yeah. me here. Uh, Varys, you believe him? Oh, absolutely. And I think what Rachel brought up is great. And this is the point I was going to make too. He speaks for the people. You know, we're all dealing with all, everybody wanting to rule the kingdom, and we forget there are people that are going to be ruled by these people, and we occasionally need to check in and hear their voices. Not just in, not just getting slaughtered in the streets, not just getting like used or walking and throwing dirt at, at Cersei. We need right. more. And so with Varys, that's what he's talking about. He's saying, you can cr talk all the crap you want, but I'm the people you're going to rule. I represent them, and you need to understand that, you know, that w how to get in touch with us. And Danny, at times, Danny gets a bit too cocky, a bit too arrogant, <laughs> and someone has to take her down a peg or two. And it's irrelevant. This is nothing to do with gender. She's just too cocky sometimes, and someone's got to come along and put her in her place. And I think uh, 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 Varys does a great job of doing that. And, and what he did there in speaking to her about it, he said to her, this is what I've come, you know I've come from a, nothing, just like you. Having to fight, having to scrawl and, clat and, and uh, uh, scratch and claw for my place in the world. Mm -hmm. So I get where you're coming from. Yeah. So, and then, but I, would, I love what Danny said, just come tell it to my face. Yeah. And that's respect. And that for me, in that moment, I was like, okay, she's getting stronger and stronger as a leader. That's exactly right. It was an outlaw John Roca <laughs> moment for that's me. It, that's it, right it was. <laughs> Damn right it was. Eh, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. And, and, then when you, and then when you see all these, uh, because this is what you're leading into this yeah. thing of the painted table, this to me was a joy to see all these ladies in charge of this situation coming together, Tyrion like explaining the military strategy, all, and then all of them, like, you can sense it's an uneasy alliance, which mm -hmm. I really yeah. enjoy as, an, as a viewer of the show, because then you put the drama in there, right? Because Alaria is just, she just wants to destroy everything and kill everything. Then there's little cracks about like, well, we saw what happened. You can't kill little children, little girls, like right. with Tyrion saying all that stuff. And then Olena, of course, coming through saying, listen to an old woman. If you take any counsel from an old woman, yeah. you know, a clever man. The reason I've survived them is because I don't listen to clever men. And to me, that laid the groundwork that what we see later with, uh, with uh, uh, Theon, mm. Kevin the PTSD and jumping over the ship, sometimes family bonds are a lot stronger than you think they are, right. no matter what people are saying. Right. And in those moments, I don't know if what Elena is doing is foreshadowing Tyrion's maybe eventual betrayal. Oh, uh, and so like if there that. was a lot, that to me, that's when you talk about that You no are action. representing House Lannister. Yes, that's damn right, yeah, Andy. Yeah. So when you talk about no, you know, no action, that's action. That's yeah. really action. So. Yeah, there was a lot out of that stuff here, uh, Rachel. We got, we got some powerful leaders of powerful houses. Like John said, they're, not, they're, they're learning to get along. Yeah. I think Danny's learned a lot from previous advice, finally. Like yeah. you said, she didn't yeah. listen a lot to Barristan, mm -hmm. the whole justice with injustice, and justice with justice, mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And even Sir Jorah telling her early on, the small folk don't care about your Game of Thrones. Yeah. Right. So she's learned all this stuff here, but yeah. what do you feel about Elena, Ilaria, Yara, what's going on here? I love that the, the show at large in that scene explores motivations. Mm -hmm. Like, why did they all come together? Some are there for, for revenge, some mm -hmm. are there because they're like warmongers, like Yara's like, attack King's Landing now, like she wants a fight, she's right. gonna get one. But it, it, it's a testament to Danny 
everything she's learned listening to Tyrion. She steals his line from earlier in the episode, I don't right. want to be queen of the ashes. And mm. Tyrion's like, I said that to you earlier. But right. Danny understands that that is her point of view, that she doesn't want to, conquering Westeros, not the problem. She's got dragons. Yeah. But she wants to rule and she doesn't want to, you know, start out with fire and blood and have everybody just fear her. But then at the end of the scene, Elena says, that's exactly what you have to do. Mm -hmm. So how do you balance ruling with love, ruling by fear. Why do you want to rule? She does because it's her birthright, but also because she wants to enact some kind of change and be better than her father. So it's all about the yeah. motivations and the dancing around them and coming up with a plan that meets everybody's goals within yeah. this. It's, it's, it, she's definitely got this family legacy thing that's yeah. not always a good thing, and yeah. she wants to break that wheel, Dennis. Mm -hmm. Who's right, Elena, Laria, Yara? Danny? Well, well what's, right? <laughs> what's interesting for me is with Elena talking to, to Danny, like it seems to be setting up uh, Elena versus Tyrion. Like yeah. who mm. can whisper in Danny's ear and have her look? Because right now, obviously, Tyrion has her ear because a lot of the stuff that, that the strategy that being implemented is hit by his suggestion because he right. knows Westeros. But Elena seems to, she's. Like like uh, Danny brought her into a uh, one-on-one conversation, mm. she is motivated by hatred. Yeah. She wants revenge for, for Marjorie. Yeah. Um, so it, it remains to be seen. I'm going to tend to side uh, more with Elena where I, you, you're not going to be able to take this the lands just by like, hey, I'm, yeah. I'm the good person. Yeah. There's also, like you guys said, a bad reputation with the right. Targaryen mm -hmm. name. They're yeah. going to spin a lot of stuff, and we'll talk about this later. They're going to spin yeah. a lot of stuff about who... Who Danny is? They're going to call her like the Mad Queen. Yes, absolutely. We are, and and also the we're going to talk more about Melisandre too, and what that led to uh, uh, what we might be getting next week. Uh, but this this great strategy, which I think it's a great strategy. You're going to we're going to send the Unsullied and Dothraki up here. You guys are taking the ship down here. It's all great. But John Roca, they forgot about a little <laughs> pirate. You're on. Listen. You can do anything you want to do. You can create all these things. You're beautiful. Like, we all got excited. I'm sure I did, at least, I, seeing them strategize how they're going to do. You're like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. Yes, yeah, surround them, cut off their supplies. Totally makes sense. But they didn't factor in the crazy Euron. Yeah, this is the thing. <laughs> like, they are, they are playing the game by the rules. Yeah. Euron is not. And you cannot factor in an X factor. Like, yeah. you can do your best to try to predict. But that's the thing. It's, a crazy guy is always going to come along and mess are, stuff are, up. Are, and, uh, you, are know. you saying this is an always sunny in Philadelphia wild card situation? <laughs> <laughs> this is going on here. Yeah, Euron puts on this hop topic. Hop topic. Hop top. I've been at Comic Con for 22 days. <laughs> hot topic shirt. Right. And, uh, and he's in charge. You love this ship, Silence, right? This is this ship. Just, Got some, it's got some get up and go. As, as Mickey once said, it's a ting of beauty. And I, <laughs> I, love that, I, I love that this ship is, I love the entire battle scene. Like, but Euron is such a fantastic villain, and it's, yeah. what, this, it's what this show needed that injection of a real, uh, uh, you know, a villain that swaggers in, does what he needs to do, and is just as bloodthirsty as any of the previous villains yeah. we've seen in other scenes. And this is the thing. The best laid plans of what of mice and men often go awry, and that's and what we snakes. saw here. And sand snakes, yeah, that's what we saw here. We saw, and then we saw, like, and and you know what, the Dorn thing, it ends the way it's supposed to end. These, <laughs> you know, the storyline never quite got there, like it like yeah. it is in the books. So I think you guys can yeah. speak to that. But and unfortunately, they kind of blew it on the show, and so wipe two of the sand snakes out. Take Alaria, take her other daughter, yeah. take him off the ship, use him as ransom, take uh, Yara off the ship as well, yeah. and then you see, I mean. Uh, what Alfie Allen does in that scene as an actor, where he just devolves back into Reek, yeah. is so powerful, and you get it. And he may be a smart coward, because by attacking uh, uh, Euron, he might have caused the death of himself and Yara. By yeah. jumping off the ship, and maybe people don't want to hear this, by jumping off the ship, he may have saved them both. Live to fight and that's another an, Yeah, live to fight another. As cowardly as it is. I thought it was a great moment. I know the character of Theon is going to get a lot of uh, flack out in the public. Yeah, and sure, I get it, I get it. You want to have that hero moment, but right. I love, yeah, you're right, Alfie Allen deserves a lot of credit for that moment where he's looking and seeing a lot of the torture on the ship that's going yeah. on, similar to what he experienced. And, and the, the, the twitches yeah. and the freaking and the going off, and, the, and we'll See, the Alfie Allen talked at the panel, Dennis, when we were at Game of Thrones, uh, a Hall H panel, about finding empathy for this character, yes. which might be a little hard uh, because sometimes you want to go, come on! Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, there before that, that, that kind of freak out scene, you saw him fighting valiantly. Yeah, doing like, great. And so you kind of were cheering for him mm -hmm. at that point. You're like, oh, look, he's doing yeah. good, he's taking, and then he got to the critical moment, he just. It, it, it too much, I mean, not enough time has passed since yeah. his, he's not fully transformed back to Theon yet. Yeah. You know, you saw in that sequence, 
very funny sequence with uh, Yara and Ilaria, oh, yeah. where he's the protector, right? Yeah. And then the whole like foreign <laughs> invasion thing, right? Yeah. And he's yeah. very uncomfortable with that, and, <laughs> and you know, so he's not fully there yet. And you see him jumping yeah. ship, but you know, we'll, we know that's going to lead to other things. That's going to lead to this journey. Yeah, Rachel, we got to talk about these sand snakes. They never uh, quite realize their full potential. Uh, the Dornish plan is not going on here. We know this. Yeah. Uh, Nymeria <laughs> and Obara, rest in peace. Yeah, uh, got, as I read in a couple places, forsaken, uh, <laughs> tied up on that prow <laughs> at the end there. Uh, not a pretty sight. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's it's we could go back into season five. They just they didn't get as well rounded as so many of the other characters on the series got. Yeah. So their motivations always seemed very one dimensional compared to everybody else, and and that's too bad given the rich you know storylines in the books. But we won't go down that path yeah, too yeah. much. But um, they went out fighting, which is what Snan Snake should do, which is good. I'm very curious. Um, I, uh, Alaria and Yara and Tyeen appear to be Euron's gift to Cersei, mm, uh, so right. we'll see where, where that goes. I do just want to comment on Theon really quickly. Yeah. The, um, what I found about that moment was that it was very Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. It was taking, pulling the rug out from under us in terms of expectations of heroes' journeys, mm -hmm. right. like, which they do time and again. And Theon was supposed to be on the upswing. He had been a dick, done terrible things, got his comeuppance, was horribly tortured, and was finding his way back to being himself, finding his way to being a hero. And we were all behind him because Alfie mm -hmm. Allen is so amazing. And it's not that easy to change. Yeah. Like, yeah. as human beings, it's not that easy to change. And he's a cowardly person at heart like he always right. had been and it's hard to lose that yeah. and I do think that there are other factors the PTSD that John yeah. mentioned and the idea of survival which is so prevalent in this episode Varus is a survivor um, Jora is a survivor mm -hmm. Hot Pie claims he's a survivor <laughs> so this is Theon in survival mode yeah. and and the more I think about that moment the more I love it because it undercuts expectations but also makes so much sense and Alfie Allen, it's some of his best work to That's date. That's a great point, John. Yeah, and I want to say one thing. Those of you sitting in your comfortable couches, sitting in comfortable chairs. <laughs> what would you do? What would you do? You haven't been tortured and had your thing, your manhood taken <laughs> off of you and turned into a sausage. Like, you, let's yeah. see what you would do in that situation when the moment happened. Yeah. So, d judge, that's not ye I, be judged. You <laughs> are the Thrones talk expert on vengeance and revenge. Exactly. And exactly. you're saying this was not the time. This was not the time. <laughs> this was not, this was not the time. time. No, no, you got to know what's another going on. Another point on Euron, like you mentioned, yeah. he's yeah. a great villain. We, we already had Ramsey was a great villain yeah. for yeah. Last season yep. and before, he's different because he actually, in terms of physical combat, yeah. he bested Yara, he yep. bested the Sand Snake. So yep. Ramsey, you know, even you saw Battle of Battles, he's like, yep. I'm not gonna fight he you. He ran away. Yeah, right. I'm not gonna fight yeah. you. He was all about conniving, and you know, he was very, you know, sadistic. Where Euron is like, no, 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 I'm gonna lead the charge. He was the first, the first one down. One, first one to the bridge. When the ship oh. comes down, the br yeah. yeah, that thing was awesome. Was and he was out there fighting. He wasn't yep. hiding behind anybody yeah. else. I have a strange, mad respect for him for doing that because everyone's talking and yeah, yeah. want to hold hands and do kumbaya. Euron's like, f all that. I'm taking it all. You know, sometimes, there's, but there's something to that sometimes yeah. with these bad guys, which is what Game of Thrones is so good at. You talk about mm -hmm. destroying the hero's journey, Rachel, mm -hmm. which is a great point and great insight. It's also these bad guys who are the heroes in their own stories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I got a mission, and, and we're gonna. We already kind of see, and that's looking at next week. We don't want to talk too much, but it seems like the people of King's Landing are gonna be like, "Good job, pirate. Yeah, we like you there." Uh, this battle, though, Rachel, we're a long way from Blackwater. Yeah, I mean, the it's, budget here. The, yeah. Oh my goodness! In I, I've read different things, and I've talked to a bunch of people last night, and some people didn't love the battle, but it's you can't compare one to the other. This isn't a hard home or a Blackwater mm -hmm. or Castle Black or even Battle of the Bastards. This was only nine minutes. It was at yeah. the end of a long episode. So it, it couldn't be that big thing because we got more big things coming. Right. But it was great for what it was because we'd never seen something at sea like that. It had to happen at night because how else would Euron have snuck up on them? Mm -hmm. And I thought it was staged really well for all of that. I mean, some of it was a little generic and the Sand Snakes weren't quite as badass as I wanted them to be, but Euron makes up for it because he goes full berserker mm -hmm. yeah. on it. And that action and that, he just exudes charisma. Hot Topic, you know, outfit and all. <laughs> like it's. I right. love that part of him, and, and he lifted the whole thing up for me. And, you know, it's, 
it's not just a wildfire blowing up a ship. Mm. It's actual combat ship to ship and right. everything. And I actually, I thought it was pretty well directed by Mark Mylod. Well, well uh, Liam Cunningham talked at the mm -hmm. panel again. He's talked about how each, they, each season they feel they've got to you know, raise the stakes with the battles mm -hmm. so that the fans might. And, and, and Sir Davos himself is saying it's not about raising the stakes or doing something bigger and bigger and bigger with each right. battle. It's finding something new mm -hmm. yeah, with each battle. Yeah. And this wasn't episode nine. This right. wasn't we're yeah. all waiting for year on. Yeah. And, and this this was out of the blue. I mean, you kind of, you know, we knew something was going to happen, but right. out of the blue, out of the blue of the characters. Two. Yeah, yeah, this <laughs> wasn't a big battle. This was a moment and a bigger plan. Yes. And it's and, fun to watch. Too. And once again, like you said, uh, Rachel laid the groundwork and they zig when they zag. That's what makes yeah. Game of Thrones so great. We're all comfortable enjoying this episode. Everyone's coming together. <laughs> uh, we got a foreign invasion. Yeah, yeah we, stuff the, going the on. plan and is then, working. Uh, the plan is working, right. Gonna everything's yeah. everything's going to be fine. Exactly. And Euron goes, all the thrones, all the queens. That's yeah. what I want. And he goes right in and destroys everything. And that's what you need. You need someone to come in and mess yeah. stuff up because we were getting a little too staid with conversation and, and strategy. You need someone yeah. to come in and blow stuff up just so you can and be focused and troubleshoot and see what can happen. And, and it adds great drama to the show. It yeah. evens the playing field, yeah. which is the thing Absolutely. during right. our you know preview episodes. We yeah. were like, how is Danny not going to go in and just crush? Right. right. And, and I loved that her plan was so great, but the thing about her plan was that it deployed her forces mm -hmm. and separated her dragons from her forces. So there was no dragon coming to the rescue for this because right. they were snuck up on. Also, Danny's still the only one who can ride a dragon at this point. So when you take the dragons out of the equation and you just have one of her armies versus one of Cersei's armies, in this instance, Cersei's army won. Right. And so it, it shows that Danny does is it invincible right. in this whole scenario? Right. And one more thing, we saw the shaky in the council. We saw this this shaky uh, exchange where she said, "Oh, so your plan is to use our forces?" Yeah. And mm -hmm. now the first time they try to use our force, just to set them in a position, all the Dorn for Dornish forces are in the in the in the water. In the so water. it's like, what does that mean for time? What does that do for Elena? Like yeah. what, now, Elena's like maybe whoa, even whoa, more whoa. hesitant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like going to Comic Con. <laughs> you have great plans. You get there. This problem with the hotel room. Everything's going on. You don't get internet in the media suite, Dennis. Oh, yeah. This is a this is best laid plans type situation. Yeah, here. definitely. And then let's move on from yeah. from, from yeah. war to love. We gotta see some uh, eunuch sex. Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some eunuch. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, that was a touching scene. I actually felt it turned, it, the caved for me in a, in a show that's that's boobs and dragons and sex and all this kind of t titillation. Mm. The cave uh, with with Egret John was my favorite sex scene because it meant something. And this one. This one meant something, Dennis. Yeah, yeah, we, we saw this one coming, and we just didn't know how they were going to pull it off, you know? Yeah. I know we had talked before the show, this show. Like, we are we like, going to see it? Are we going to see it? Are we going to see it? Yeah, because yeah. Game of Thrones usually, you know, doesn't yeah. shy away from showing things. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was a nice, uh, tender scene between right. the, these two. And, and, and I like the speech that, that uh, Grey Worm yeah. gives before, yeah. before about fear. He's like, that I'm the bravest. Great. I, you know, I don't fear anything. People fear this. They fear that. And they force them. He's like... Now yeah. you, he's like, you are my weakness, which is like, like yeah. to her, Masande is like, what? She what? thinks it takes it kind of like as an insult, but it's like really, it's sweet. A, really sweet thing. It's sad, tragic. Yeah. And Jacob Anderson, I think, there's, deserve, deserves a lot of credit. He's a musician first before an actor, mm -hmm. and he is uh, he's doing a lot with just not being having to limit his vocabulary, mm -hmm. his speech mm -hmm. because of this character. And I thought it was, a, a, it was a great moment, Rachel. Yeah, it was those quiet character moments that we love, the calm before the storm. We don't yeah. know what's going to happen with Grey Worm. I mean, they're heading for Castle Rock, which is a brilliant stroke. Yeah. And But, mm -hmm. you know, Danny's first stroke turned out badly, so will this yeah. unsullied attack on Castle Rock turn out badly? So mm -hmm. you see that moment, and you, and you just hope it's not their last moment, but it's Game of Thrones, so you yes. don't know. So, But I'm with Dennis. My favorite part of it was his speech and the idea of weakness, because all of our heroes or versions of heroes have weaknesses, and they constantly get exploited in this world, and, it, and it's how do you you know, harden yourself against right. those moments. And um, it was nice to see the walls come down for a moment for right. these two. It, 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 was, it, was, it was, like I said, it was sweet, it was serious, it was, yeah. it was bittersweet. And John, what do you think about Grey Worm's ass? I mean, <laughs> it's a nice butt. Yeah. On both sides, both yeah. Miss Sunday and, and uh, Grey Worm. It was Great work in the gym to both of you. <laughs> but I would say also, um, I agree with all of you. I think that scene was very beautiful. And if you've been in a relationship, sometimes they want you to say it. 
Yeah, she said, she said, no, I don't know why. I don't know why you can't go. I don't know why. Yeah. You, you know, and then so she makes him say, which is a very sweet and tender because what a great acting job by him yeah. as well. You know, coming off what I said about Alfie, what he's doing is yeah. fantastic work too. Is great work. He really gave into that and talked about the vulnerability and the fear. That's what happens. What love is sometimes putting yourself out there and getting the chance and putting yourself out there to get hurt. You know, yeah. and so both of them ex had that exchange. And you know, he must have been in a lot of bed chambers to know exactly what to do. Yeah. Props <laughs> to you, Grey Worm. You must have paid really close attention. <laughs> it's it like, was a quick study. It I'm was just like John you. Snow, man. John Snow read yeah, some books too when he got <laughs> that case. Yeah. Um, There's something in those chronicles. <laughs> so from that moment, we're going to go on to uh, some more stuff in a bit here. But first, I want to tell you about our partner on the show, Stardust. Stardust is a great app. You could go on and react immediately, fast, right there. You film yourself. You put your phone up to here, and you film your face reacting to things like Game of Thrones. What did you think about Stormborn? I want to know. Go to the Stardust app. You can get it on iOS. You can get it on Google, and you'll find all of us on there. You can interact with us. Just put it on there and tell us what you thought about this episode. We got some reactions from you guys out there right now. Do you hear that? That's the fabric of reality breaking because Jon Snow is going to meet Daenerys next week. Finally, the big moment we've all been waiting for, it's finally getting put into motion. I can see all the dots connecting. Love the stuff with Jon and Daenerys trying to find their ways as rulers in this land. Jon goes to meet Danny. Awesome. This is the beginning of the end for Daenerys Targaryen. She's going to realize she's a good conqueror, not a good ruler, and sacrifice herself by the end of the series. I'm calling it now. I've been saying it for a while. You're on Greyjoy. They said he was the new Bolton this season, and I, I hate him. You're a Theon Greyjoy. I am done with him. He is a coward. He has no spine. Theon, you little punk. Ugh. I don't know. I kind of love the bad guys on this show. I do. If this episode is any indication of Euron Greyjoy, I want more. So real quick, there's a theory that Euron, uh -huh. the gift, is going to maybe be a dragon. Just, wow, another great episode. And keep it up, Game of Thrones. There we have some of our friends and family reacting. Wendy and her husband uh, of the Movie Channel couple uh, uh, up there. And, and our, our good friend Billy Pollahan has been uh, a friend of this show and others for a long time. So that's what you guys could do with Stardust. You, and you got to see me without, uh, you know, my bedroom there. John, yeah, did you see yeah. that for Your hair looked great. Uh, yeah, did not. It did not. It was middle of moving. All right. Middle of moving. All right. So the odds have changed. Not necessarily even, but the odds have changed for Cersei Lannister. All hail the queen. And she wants a lot of people to hail her. She needs people to hail her. And we got to see Cersei and Jaime Lannister recruiting some help and Randall Tarly returns. We saw him last year in one of the most memorable and most uncomfortable dinner scenes we've ever seen on Game of Thrones or, or life in general. Randall Tarly and his son Dickon, who of course are uh, the, the father and brother of our beloved Samuel Tarly. So, uh, and also we got to see a big weapon being built with one of my favorite characters, Kyburn. Rachel, I will start with you. Is Cersei Lannister, she's doing a great job, like Dennis said earlier, mm -hmm. using what we kind of know about Danny over right. Marine. You heard some stuff. She put some stuff, she, she crucified the ver es Essos versions of you guys. Right. Fight for me. How does Cersei looking? It's so smart. I mean, she, it's propaganda in the, in, in the midst of it happening and, and selling what lords she has left yeah. on the fact that, like, foreigners have invaded yeah. and Olena Tyrell, who used to be loyal to the crown, is the one that ferried them over here. And right. in, in that in particular is the, is the you know, strategy she's trying to use against Randall Tarley, who is a bannerman, a supposedly loyal bannerman, to the Reach and to the Tyrells. So she's saying all the right things, and it's it, what we were saying in our preview episode again was the Dothraki and Unsullied in Westeros are going to scare people. Yep. And the daughter of the Mad King, who we know isn't mad, or mm. not completely, mm. the, it, it's, they are just going to assume the worst because Robert's Rebellion was not that long ago. It is in the memories of these people. Randall Tarley yeah. fought in that battle. He was yeah. the only person to ever have defeated Robert Baratheon. So there's a lot of really smart moves on her part. And I loved... Um, them, you know, sort of stepping up and going, but yeah, what about dragons? We haven't had to deal with those for over a hundred years. 
um, and and Kyburn's like, we're working on that. Okay. And then that scene with the, the skulls and Blairy and the Dread, as a yeah. book reader, I've pictured that hall yeah. in my mind so many times, and I thought they nailed that. And that giant crossbow that made me think of The Hobbit, yeah. the last Hobbit mm -hmm. movie, it, it, it's that, that is a formidable weapon. Yeah. The dragons can be killed, and one's going down this season. Yeah. I don't doubt it. But I, I think Cersei's in a place of power now, and she played that perfectly. Yeah. Somewhere mm -hmm. Joffrey is in his grave going, I, that's the crossbow I wanted, John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, what do we think going on here? How's Cersei looking in your eyes right uh, now? I, just like, uh, just like we, they said in the first episode, you know, you can't doubt Cersei. Like, she finds a way. Sansa says this. She finds a way to always survive. She finds a way right. to win. Don't, over don't underestimate her, you know, no matter what position. And no one's more dangerous, especially someone like Cersei, than when they're backed into a corner and desperate. You yeah. know, there's a meme going around. I came here to blow stuff up and take care of my children. I'm all out of children. And that's yeah. exactly <laughs> what's going on here, you know. She's, she's lining up her forces. And she's using something we've seen in our current political climate. Do you want to be around the savages and the eunuchs? They bring these, these hordes to your life. Like, no, they're going to go in and rape yeah. your women and take your stuff. We hear this in this political climate all the time. It was almost like an attack ad right, right. done mm -hmm. from the throat. Right. Yeah. In a position of power down to the lords, right? But Tarly, to his credit, for whatever he did to Sam, Tarly is a, is a loyal person and yeah. defends his kinship with Olenna. Uh, no, having known her since she was a child. Yeah. So there's a really yeah. strong bond there. But And Jamie's, of course, offering him all these kinds of things. Offering, and I love the fact that Jamie uh, messed up his, uh, his kid's name <laughs> yeah, yeah. and referenced a Lannister's yeah. name. Yeah. I yeah. thought that was brilliant. That's a way of saying, maybe that's a little foreshadowing that kid's going to die at some point <laughs> himself uh, to, by Jamie's hand. So this whole thing, uh, once again, just like we saw in the, uh, in the Painted Table, we see this uneasy alliance on, on Cersei's yeah. side as well. But this uneasy alliance gives Cersei some kind of power and evening the playing field so that we can enjoy the fact that we don't know what's going to happen. And yeah. going down there with Kyborn, that crossbow was awesome. And yeah, I agree with, uh, I agree with Rachel. One of these dragons is going down. Yeah. I hope it's not drug on, but you never know. I mean, yeah. we, don't, we lost call. So it could be the ending of, this, of that particular chapter of her life for Danny and fully moving on to another right. area of her life if they kill Dragon. But it's going to be something. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and Dennis, I mean, do you believe... Do you believe Jamie in the situation? Is he just doing his duty, trying to defend his love and sister? Yeah. I just sentence I said out loud. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, in some way he ha might respect Tarly being like, uh, I'm going to think about this. Yeah, I, I don't think he fully has his heart in it. I think he's mm -hmm. doing it purely because, you know, he, he loves his sister in the right. weird, twisted way that he does. Yeah. Um, and also just because that's what his queen commands and he can't look like he's, you know, trying to betray her at all and yeah you know you talk about her spinning this story so not like Westeros has like cell phones and internet you know you can't like go check up on yeah. facts she starts spinning these rumors talking about the right. mad queen coming to take that's going to spread through yeah. through yeah. all the noblemen what's interesting is the contrast between that scene and what you see in Winterfell last season when Jon Snow becomes, becomes yeah. king in the north they passionately want him to be king yeah mm -hmm. they are supportive of him loyal to him even though we'll talk about what happens uh, later in this episode, where with her, you see it's all quiet. Everyone's fearful mm -hmm. for her. No, they don't want to say anything. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like they really want to back her. Yeah. It's they have to. Well, it's yeah. a lesser of two evils. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Randall Tarly says it. Like, heard that like, before See somewhere. what she does yeah. to people who don't yeah. agree with her. Right. Like, uh, exactly. I'm coming to listen here. Yeah. Uh, Rachel, do you think Randall Tarly is going to choose family loyalty or the new world he has to live in? He sort of reminds me of the Tywin Lannister we read about during the yeah. Robert's mm. Rebellion. The guy that kind of, during Robert's Rebellion, Tywin didn't join either side. He mm. was like basically like buying time, see which side was going to, to look like the winner and then sort of join up at the last second and be like, I was with Robert the whole time and he right. kind of wasn't. Um, I, I feel like Randall's that sort of tactician, that sort of like take a step back, Check out the playing field. Check out the first couple of skirmishes, and maybe make a decision. In not, that not quite way. the late Walder Frey, but just more right, of like hmm. a, just a, just just a, a check out the the playing field. Yeah. And I think he might end up joining Cersei based on Euron's victory. Right. Like like Cersei, you know, drew, drew first blood. Euron's going to come back to like a hero's welcome, mm -hmm. which is just weird. And it, I think that might tip. Mm you know, um, Randall's hand. But I have to say, I kind of, I'm hoping for an Olena Randall scene this season. I don't know if we'll get it, but that comment he made about having known her since he was a child, mm. I, I 
I want to see that dynamic because yeah. the whole Lord um, and Bannerman dynamic is an interesting one in the show, and we see a lot of it play out in the North, but not as much mm. elsewhere. Yeah. And so I'd be curious if there's room in the season for yeah, that. Yeah, ca calling the banners is definitely something the Northern uh, yeah. say a lot more than they do in the South. Yeah. It seems like South, I'm the king or queen, you just have to do it here. John, predictions, mm. Randall Tarley and his son Dickon. Maybe not long. For, by the way, Dickon definitely grew yeah. between seasons. It's a, it's yeah. a different, different actor. This is a different, yeah. yeah. Oh, it is? A different yeah. actor, oh, okay. but, I thought it was um, say he's been eating some hot pies. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you think? Randall Tarley? Where does he pledge? Uh, I, think he, I think he's a smart... Uh, we've seen he's a, uh, he's a fantastic warrior. That's his legend. And, you know, we've seen him be an asshole, but there's a reason he's as successful and powerful in mm -hmm. legend and lore as he is. Yeah. He's smart. He is not a person who steps forward and just does whatever uh, right. works for him and in terms of like uh, uh, being in charge of things. So he's smart. He takes his time. He's figuring out. He didn't immediately go, okay, you're right. I'll be on your side. He's a very intelligent man. There's a reason for this. So he's got to, he brings a lot to the table. But yeah, I think he's going to go along this plan with Cersei, with Jamie for a little bit and then see where the chips lay. And we may get that scene that turns him. We yeah. may get a scene with him and Olena and it turns him. And, but, but right now, Cersei has got Euron and has got potentially Tarly. These are two very powerful warriors on her side and almost turning the advantage to right. her, to, oh. uh, turning it to her advantage. A lot of a good pedigree from <laughs> Randall Tarly there. Dennis, I need some odds. I need some Vegas odds. Where does he go? I think because of the nature of his character, yes, he's a loyal person. I think they're going to figure out a way to make it okay for him to accept Cersei's offer, offer yeah. of, you know, if they win, then he becomes a warden of the South yeah. type mm -hmm. of situation. So I, I'm going to lean towards Cersei. Yeah, men do love their titles and lands and powers <laughs> in the world of Westeros. And I, again, Kyburn, Anton Lester, one of my favorite characters on the show. You see him all the way back, what is that, uh, season three, right? Yeah. He's when the first time you see him over at Harrenhal, and he evolves into this very important and very mischievous and very diabolical character, played to perfection. I just love the quiet stuff that he says, you know, about, will, will the process change the mountain? <laughs> Um, <laughs> love so that creepy. stuff. Uh, it's so good, and I love this crossbow thing here. It was, and again, yeah, as as a nerdy book reader, there was a couple moments in this sh this episode where you're like, oh, that's something I read about, <laughs> and uh, the, including the last dragon being the size of a cat. I just wonder if the Quiborn thing is a James Bond, like Q. Q always coming up Q. with these devices, yeah. always coming up with these Could ways. Be. So I always wonder if that was influenced by. The Bond thing George R. R. Martin tweeted, tweeted, and let us know. This guy, guy, but he's, he's got that. Yeah. He's always working on. He's something. always working yeah. on something that helps he's the person like, he's with. Cersei, I've got of, your yeah. new weapon. It's yeah. a BMW. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. So we saw Randall Tarley, who is a fierce and respected warrior. His son, not so much, but his son, Samuel Tarley, is yeah. down in the Citadel, down in Old Town, doing some very <laughs> important things. And once again. The actor John Bradley involved in probably one of the more disgusting sequences <laughs> in all of Game of Thrones. But as a Sir Jorah fan, I'm going to confess to you right now in my Sir Pounce shirt, um, I got tears in my eyes. I'm a Jorah guy. I'm a Mormont guy. And to see this moment, to see Samwell invoke the name and memory of Jor Mormont, who once told Samwell Tarly, I forbid you to die, to basically call back to that. And now he is paying that back to his fallen leader, his fallen mentor, a fallen father figure, to have Samwell say that to Jorah. It was a moment that was, it was really, really well earned and I loved it, but then it got really disgusting. Mm. Um, Rachel, dragon, uh, uh, dra <laughs> grayscale, with those little dragon scales, this is uh, hard to watch, but needed. Huh? Oh my God, I mean, I, I feel like Old Town is like now someplace I don't ever want to go. Don't ever want to go. I'm just grossed out. Season Thought it was after, just a cool episode library. after. <laughs> after that, spend more time in there. Yeah. Um, First, real quick, last week we thought that Jim Broadbent was playing Archmaester Marwyn, and it right. turns out that that is not the case. He is Archmaester Ebros, who's only briefly mentioned in the books, but he's particularly um, involved with the healing arts. So that yeah. did make sense with this episode. And, 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 yeah, and that's something IMDB, sometimes you get yep, some information that's right. wrong. Yeah. I am outright disappointed that that is not Arch Archmaester Marwyn. Mm -hmm. I am too, because Marwyn had, had, was more of like a mystical bent, and there's yes. dragon glass mm -hmm. candles, and there's, and I didn't think the show was going to, to go into all of it, but there was, he was more interested in the big picture things yeah. that were happening in Westeros involving Danny mm -hmm. and prophecies and things like that, and, and Ebros is, is much more down to earth and, and interested yeah. in specific things, and um, 
so I, I found his dynamic with Sam very amusing and very interesting and, and, and the, the title of the book that he's working on and mentioning Ma Maester Pylos is mm -hmm. another shout out to, to, the, um, to the books. But it, it was that moment. I loved how many times in this episode there was a callback mm -hmm. to seasons past or characters past yeah. and how many times characters overheard a name or heard a name or saw somebody they didn't expect to. And it, and it just made us think back to seasons past. And I yeah. loved, loved Sam's reaction to learning that that is J.R. Moments son and and that, that spurred him to do a very unsam like thing i yeah. mean the guy's stealing stuff and 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 you know <laughs> breaking all the rules now and and sneaks into jorah's cell where jorah was basically writing a suicide note to khaleesi mm -hmm. and i was very moved and then sam comes in and is like i'm gonna do this thing and then starts doing a thing that I just couldn't watch. And then one final thing, shout out to the editors this season. They have been phenomenal the whole series, but yeah. they don't call attention to themselves very often. But last week's montage yes. was brilliantly edited yes. in the gross, disgusting way. And then this, we see those gross shots of him carving at the grayscale, and then it cuts to somebody digging into a pie, and you think they, that's I thought it was. That I, totally <laughs> fooled me. I, and I was like, you guys are good. Like, yeah. that, that was just fun. Um, they did it a couple times throughout the yeah. episode. There were some other cuts between scenes that I was like, ooh, fake out. Well, and, and, and you, of all people, if people don't know, that is your, that is <laughs> your primary <laughs> trade. You are an editor out here in this industry, yep. and you do a great job, and so it's, it's it's, uh, it's perfect that you would call out to this stuff here. Yeah, that, that moment was pretty disgusting, but, but this, there's an importance. We don't know yet the part Jorah will play. We don't. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, when he's writing that suicide note, <laughs> did you guys think he was like, Khaleesi? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I thought. Uh, Roka, other yeah. than this being disgusting, this is a good scene, right? Yeah, absolutely. Great exchange between both of them, and, and furthers both of their storylines very, very powerfully, and both their characters very powerfully. You know, people may not forget this, or people may not know this, but Lady Mormont's his cousin. So this, yeah. this when he says, like, they, they, I don't speak to them anymore, or I've, I'm dead, I've been dead to them for quite some time, that's laying a groundwork for a possible reconciliation mm -hmm. down the road, and I love that. Shout out to the writers. Like, this is, they're, they're laying, all throughout this episode, there's little seeds being laid of stuff that's going to happen later on. Not just obvious seeds being laid, there's also little small ones if you catch them, and I think that was great between them. And as someone who suffers occasionally, Sarias is like, mm -hmm. seeing that scene was <laughs> oh, it was horribly disgusting. Seeing it peeled off and seeing the pus underneath, like all of that. What they're doing, uh, also what they're doing there is showing you what's, like the depths to which Sam is willing to go. I always respect doctors being able to see stuff like that and not throw up, because for me, I'm always a gag reflex. Yeah. So one gag reflex away from throwing up and a scene like that, especially the one last week, certainly gets you there. And But I, like, I loved the reality of the scene as well. Yeah. When it was being carved off his body, the screaming, the pain, yep. the frustration, all of it in combo. And that actor, uh, I always forget his name, uh, Jorah Mormont's actor. Ian Glenn. Ian Glenn, Ian Glenn yeah. he is so great at, at uh, those quiet moments, but also in the powerful moments when he has to be step forward, and you see that in he, their exchange. He, in Kingdom of Heaven, he's for one little yep. blip, he's, he's the King of England. Yeah. And that, he, there's a weight to that scene. I love yeah. what he does there. Yeah. Also in uh, what Tomb Raider, uh, the first Tomb Raider. Oh, and I, I yeah. would counter Rachel's point a little bit. I think this is Sam, who, who Sam is now. I think this is who Sam, who oh, Sam okay, is now. Yeah. I think who Sam like was that. before was like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But since he took that sword, this is Sam now. He goes for what he wants. If he has to break the rules, he, he is the new generation. He is the new, uh, mm. just like Danny wants to bring this new change, Sam is the new change in the Maesters, and I love that. You yeah, know? absolutely. Sam has grown. Sam has yeah. grown, Dennis. Yeah, uh, Citadel has become the king of all the gross outs here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. With last week and this week now, Next week, I'm sure, once they move to the Citadel, we're going to be like, oh, no. what kind of gross thing are we going to see now? Yeah, it was a it was a nice scene to see between Samwell and Jorah. Um, I'm interested in seeing where Jorah goes from, you know, yeah. obviously, yeah. they're not going to do this whole sequence and have him die. Right. Right. So where, he's, where is he going to go from here? Is he going to head back to, you know... Yeah, did Westeros, you, uh, well, defined, she said, "Come back to me." Yeah, yeah. yeah. She said, "Heal yourself." If, come she, back to if, me, she, so, if yeah. he heads up the trail to Dragonstone, is like, "Hey, I'm all good." I mean, that's got to mean something. Mm -hmm. This isn't just some moment where he's going to be like, "Hi, I'm going to stand on your side." There's got to be something to it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, and then, will we ever see a reunion? Not a reunion. I don't know how long he's been gone, but has Leanna ever seen him before? Right. Maybe if she was a baby, or that, that's or, a good note. Mm -hmm. She's about what ten last season, ten eleven in, in character, right? So he he's been gone a while. Mm -hmm. uh, Rachel, off the top of our heads, Jora Jora when he sold uh, sold those oh, when he sold slaves, the slaves for Lynnes. Was, yeah. was it after the Poachers Greyjoy right? Rebellion? Yeah. I, 
Yes, because he was a hero of the Greyjoy yeah, Rebellion. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so she might have been born, but I don't know. She probably doesn't yeah. remember him. I yeah. doubt at it. All. And they kind of threw in that little thing about the, with, with Archmaester about Shireen. Yeah. Like, yes. Because we all thought, oh, okay, she was cured, and then yeah. he, he dispelled that by saying, <laughs> oh, that was an infant, and yeah. we caught it early. He's like, have you seen him? Have you seen <laughs> him? We're looking at him right now. Yeah. Uh, and I love that. I love, I love what you said, John, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the, uh, about the growth in Sam, how, how mm -hmm. you know you got Jim Broadbent saying, uh, "Yeah, great. Yeah, he did work on it. You know how he died? Yeah. Grayscale. Yeah. <laughs> so you want to do that? It's a risk to Sam's actions, and that's a change, Dennis. Yeah, and he's got six months before. I mean, they said years yeah. before he actually physically dies, dies but, yeah. but, but he'll be his mind will be gone in about six right. months. So he's running against the clock. And we talked about reunions and and characters and callbacks, and we got we got two big ones. Well, one one funny one and one giant one we've been waiting for a long time. Arya Stark, the Batman of Westeros, is at the end of the crossroads <laughs> and running into her old bread-baking, pie-making friend, Hot Pie. Yeah. This was something. Unexpected reunion, John. I really like this moment. Yeah. Hot Pie is, uh, is a consistent character. Just wants to talk about how you how you brown the, the dough first, which yeah. is something Arya did, didn't do when she made a pie, uh, but also a sweet moment there with Absolutely. Hot Pie. Absolutely, and we saw this in the last episode, too with the hound going back to that cabin and the father and daughter like yeah. all these things that like they're going back over this journey right and now it's Arya's turn to go back to this to mm -hmm. want something from her past to kind of have this and hot pie was uh, he was just great i'm yeah. just a great back and forth and i love the exchange at the end it was like i can't believe i thought you were a boy yeah. You're actually pretty good looking. You know, <laughs> just that kind of clumsy, clumsy kind of friendly yeah, flirting, yeah. but obviously not crossing that line, but very friendly kind of back and forth with yeah. that. But she finally, uh, uh, so just like we were saying earlier, Game of Thrones, Ziggs went and Zag, unexpectedly, this is how she gets the news. Yeah, Randomly, yeah. just stopping off to get food, checking in with Hot Pie, and then, you know, she, he tells her the king. And to her credit, which I was talking about last week, if she goes too far into the vengeance place, she's going to die. To her right. credit, she has the option to go to King's Landing, turns and wants to go to Winterfell and reunite with Jon Snow. And I think that's great. And it, once again, this is action too. This is an excitement that they're going to reunite. So we may get Sansa, Jon, and Arya together now launching a full offensive. Yeah. And I think that's great when you have her and Needle coming. You, you can't discount Needle. And I yeah. love that they might be coming back into yeah. the situation. And, and there's this moment, you know, <laughs> Arya's got this, this mask on in a way, uh, Rachel. Yeah. She's just kind of, yeah, yep, yep, hop by. I'm going around. Yep, yeah. good to see you again, hop by. Wait, my family's still alive? Yeah. Wait, what's going on? on that was that was a, a, a shows maybe the true 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 uh, emotions of what's going on inside definitely Maisie Williams really sold that sort of like hard dead-eyed you know exterior I've killed and, a man. And, yeah, <laughs> but basically and Hop High even says like what happened to you yeah. and she there's a beat and she's like looking like maybe she'll say something and then she's like do you have any ale yeah, you know, yeah. like, like she's not, sh she's so hardened by everything. And it takes a mention, not just of Winterfell and Starks, but it's the mention of Jon, yeah. who we know was the most important Stark to her, was mm -hmm. the one that had Needle forged for her, stick him with the pointy end there. Mm -hmm you know, um, goodbye in episode one of this entire series had emotional weight to it, even though it was the yeah. first episode of the yeah. series. Yeah. Like, they mean so much to each other, and so much has happened to both of them that that's the reunion we really want to see happen. Of course, she's heading north. He's heading to Dragonstone. Yeah, right, right. So we have two ships crossing in the night again <laughs> on this series. But, but that reunion does still is in the future. And yeah. I think that that is just the reunion that, that I've always wanted. And, um, and I think Maisie Williams was brilliant in that scene, really funny, really poignant with hot pie, and then the Nymeria. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll talk about Nymeria, oh. but Dennis, what are you feeling on Hot Pie? This is, I know, your favorite character. Uh, <laughs> um, he, he can bake a, a mean uh, bread. Yeah. I would have uh, liked him to have one more, like, I've been working on the direwolf bread. Here's another yeah. one. Yeah. It's like, this time it's like in 3D. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like seeing that reunion. And yeah, it just yeah. goes to show how much she's changed uh, since the last time he saw her. And, mm. and, 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 you know, talking about Jon Snow, that is the thing that can kind of. You know, mm. when she decides to go t to the north mm. instead of going south to kill Cersei, it's, it's she's choosing love over over hate. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and, and Jon Snow, I, I feel like, look, I haven't read the books or anything, but you could, you could tell just in the in in the first episode that their bond exists because, unlike Sansa, who I feel like probably took more of her mother's side with Catelyn, right. mm -hmm. where she saw Jon Snow as, oh, he is a bastard. He's not really my brother type yep. of thing. Where, where Arya's not like that. Mm, to her, right. that's like 100% her brother. And so like she has an attachment to him and, and with the whole needle thing. So 
this is, yeah, we want to see this reunion. She's going to show yeah. up at Winterfell, and it's just going to be Sansa. It's just <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, sis, what's going yeah, on? Yeah, Everyone yeah. left. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she'll be like, is, is, is John around? <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, that stuff, and, and talk, talk about, uh, I know you haven't read the books, as you know I have, and seen Nymeria and the pack of wild wolves, which is something that kind of floats in the background as you're flipping through the pages. This was one of those moments where I did this. <laughs> the, the pack of wolves! Um, and uh, Rachel, you talked about it. Nymeria, back, maybe just for this moment? I, what do we got? I think so. I think it was, it was so... Ca but over the last two episodes, Arya, her journey's being tracked by her motivations. So, you know, we see her take out the phrase in this badass moment, and then she meets the Lannister men, and it's sort of a reminder that n everything in life is not about revenge. And then she meets Hot Pie, and she's reminded of who she was. Mm -hmm. And then Nymeria is, it, it's an echo of her. Like, each of their wolves represented them as characters, and they saw themselves in their dire wolves. And to come face to face with her old self. Right. And, it, and, it's, and it's so profound because it, it's about coming full circle and going back. And can you go back to who you were? Because she's gone and done all of these crazy things, some of which she chose, some of which she didn't. And she's a completely different person. Mm. So is Nymeria. Nymeria, mm. she, she was chased away in season mm. one so that she wouldn't die. And Nymeria has gone and got herself this wolf pack and wreaks mm. havoc in the Riverlands and, yeah. and, and, and has gone down this path too. And for them to meet up, I was it, it took I was thinking all night of that line when Nymeria leaves because Arya's begging Nymeria to come with her mm. and, and Nymeria leaves and Arya says that's not you and there's so many interpretations and ideas of this and what I kind of came to was this she's acknowledging acknowledging that Nymeria is on her own path just like she is and they can't go back to who they were yeah. and Ned in season one had this conversation with Arya about you know you're going to grow up and you're going to get married and you're going to be a lady and you're going to be, mm -hmm. you know, a lady of a castle to your lord and, and, and Arya sitting there going, like, grossed out second after yeah. second. Like, I don't, that's not me. And Ned's like, you know, that's not you. And so she's saying the same thing to him at Nymeria. They can't go back to the, the wolf-girl relationship that they had before. They're on their own paths. So it was a little bit of a goodbye to who she was and a very big question mark of who she will be when she gets back to Winterfell. Mm -hmm. She's been playing this balancing game between no one and Arya Stark of Winterfell. And when she gets back, is she, what, what role does she play? Even mm -hmm. if she survives this whole thing, what role does she play? She can't go be a lady of a castle now. That's not mm -hmm. Arya. So I loved the, the reflection she saw in Nymeria in that moment and what that means for her as a character going forward and how much things have changed yeah, for her. Yeah, it, it is an absolute callback. Dan and Dave talk about it after the episode. It's oh, okay. a season one callback to, to uh, uh, Arya saying, that's not me to Ned. And then we're getting a lot of callbacks to Ned yeah. and what's going on with that, John. So yeah. sad that Nymeria might not be heading up to get some puppy chow up in Winterfell. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Nymeria's got her own plans just like Arya. Yeah, Nymeria could have taken that horse. They could have fed for days off right. that thing. So, I mean, you know, there's there's moments to be, there were there's a there was an uneasy truce in that moment. And I think uh, what Rachel brings up, the line is the most important part of that whole scene. You know, that's not you. Is she talking to herself? Is she talking to Nymeria? Are they talking to each other in that moment? And so, to me, that was a, a powerful callback to have those uh, interactions, ha have a reunite in a way. And once again, it shows you, just because you reunite with someone you haven't seen in a while, it doesn't mean it's going to work out in a positive right. way. Yeah. And so, this is, once again, I feel like this is a little foreshadowing that they're doing about what may happen in the future. So, I enjoyed the scene for what it was. I haven't read the book, so I know, I, mm -hmm. I've read some of the analysis of the episode, and it said that this is something that in the books, just passingly in the books, because she doesn't even, it isn't confirmed to her that it is Nymeria, she thinks it's Nymeria. And just like in the sequence, she looks at him and says, Nymeria? Like, she's not sure. And so whatever, with the exchange, what happens, whatever happens with their exchange, as they, as they part, we will see going down the road. So, yeah, yeah. We'll, but we'll, what, what Rachel says is right, like, they both uh, navigated their worlds as best they could, being kicked out of their situations. Right. And now they're more savage now than they were before. So she can't say that about Nymeria in a judgmental way without realizing herself that she's changed Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. The, so, yeah. the dire wolves are them. Yeah, yep. we'll get, um, when's the winner? We'll probably have some more insight into what that scene was yep. and what that meant, Dennis. Um, and again, this is what I love the perspective. Yeah, Rachel and I are the book readers go, Nymeria's back. Yeah. Ah! You guys are having a connection to something to a, a wolf you only saw getting yeah. rocks yeah, thrown yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. That's that a testament to the storytelling going on. Here. Yeah, we, you know, ever since Nymeria left, we, we knew that she would come back in sometime. Yeah. I actually didn't know it was going to take 
this long <laughs> for her to come back. Right. But it was good to see right. her. And yeah, that long line, not, not for you. I, I, I agree with Rachel. I, I think is it's a reflection of Arya looking at her and saying, oh, you're different now. I'm different yeah. now. And, yeah. and so we can't go back to the way things used to be, even though yeah. how desperately Arya wants them it's a, to be. It's a great emotional song. Uh, one final thing here, then we'll start uh, looking at the big stuff here uh, to wrap up the show. Melisandre. Oh, my favorite red priestess. <laughs> Shows up at Dragonstone, probably to collect some things she forgot when she uh, <laughs> left and headed up to the wall. But she has a message. And, and, and it's interesting. Earlier, Tyrion learned that Jon Snow, I love how word travels kind of slow. Like, what? Jon Snow? Oh, he's in charge? I like that kid. Let's call him over here. But we got Melisandre telling Danny directly about the prophecy of the prince who was promised. Azora High, that's kind of a little bit uh, mixed and matched. Uh, Rachel, we haven't necessarily heard those words directly said about one of these uh, two. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff with the Red Priests talking about this stuff. It's a great moment. Melisandre simply saying, call for John. You both have a part to play. Absolutely. There, there are multiple prophecies in the books, and, and the prince who was promised in Azora High are said by different cultures, different people. But book readers uh, have come to believe that they basically mean the same thing so the show has combined them and it, and it has also acknowledged what you know uh maester Eamon did in the books that the prince who was promised everybody assumed it was a boy but that that is not in fact the case because it is based on a dragon and a dragon is sexless and it could be either or and in this scene Masande, you know mentions that 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 the um the noun is, is not particularly male or female so that's how they got around it in this scene but the bottom line is that Danny could very well indeed be the princess who was promised. Um, but then my favorite line of the whole thing is, is Melisandre in a very meta way saying, you know, prophecies are dangerous things. Yeah. And basically meaning that no prophecy is it to be taken at face value and that two people have a part to play and that it is Danny and John and what exactly that dynamic will be is something we're about to find out. Right. Um, but that's, that's the important piece here. And I love, like you said, Tyrion sort of chiming in and being like, I don't know much about prophecies, but I do know about this guy and this guy's an honorable guy and somebody we want on our side. And so for Danny to be sort of led down the path of A, considering herself in light of this prophecy, in light of the Lord of Light, but also in light of, of meeting up with a potential ally is, is mm. I mean, that's, like John said, stuff happening and mm. a very big thing happening. Right. It, it, is, it is an absolute meta moment. It, the mm -hmm. stuff with Tyrion and, and, and Masande, that is literally that say, the showrunner saying to the book readers, or, or not book readers, but to the people watching, like, yeah. uh, here's what you've been talking in chat rooms for a while, and, yeah. and here's what's going on. Dennis, this is, this is uh, what, what's your thoughts on uh, Danny and John both having a role to play? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we knew they were both important characters from, from the beginning, so that's not a surprise. I, you know, I didn't read the book, but I've heard about this, this prophecy. My, my whole thing is with uh, Melisandre, man, she is the biggest bandwagon sports I mean. fan. And she's, uh, she's like, uh, what's his face, uh, Justin Bieber, how he, like, every time yeah. the sports team yeah. is going like, to win the Super Bowl, yeah. he's, like, suddenly wearing the hat, you know? Yeah. That's who she is. Whoever, whoever she thinks is going to win, she hops on that bandwagon. So. You heard it here first. Dead is said, says Melisandre is the Justin Bieber of Western. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so that stuff bothers me, but that's who her character is, yeah. right? Yeah. She's always trying to attach herself to whoever she thinks mm. is... Yeah. is going to become the eventual, eventual king yeah. or queen. Um, so, but as far as John and Danny, it, you know, we, we're going to get a, a meeting uh, a, of them, and, mm -hmm. and we're going to see, like, okay, uh, you know, will they be able to tell that there's some sort of something else going on there, or is right. it going to be straight like, oh, you're a Stark, I'm a... Targaryen. You're a Stark. I'm a Targaryen. Yeah, <laughs> we'll be talking about that possible reunion here in a bit. But John George R. Martin himself says, always says, these prophecies, they're, they're, people get them wrong. We of talk course. about the Red Comet in season two. That's for the Lannisters. That's for this. Mm. But that's for dragons. And that part of it might have come true. But this prophecy, we're still trying to figure it all out. Yeah, like, like everything else in life, it's all about uh, your own personal interpretation of it, your own perspective. Yeah. We've seen many cults go down that road. They go, oh, end of the world's coming. And what happens? You know, they end yeah. up killing themselves. So these, these prophecies are ridiculous. And I don't want to Red Priestess prophecy shame, but you can't keep jumping from person to person <laughs> thinking, thinking it's going to work out. Take some time. Maybe look at yourself. Analyze what you're doing wrong. 
Why are you picking these same people that don't end up being, you know? Like, I just, so to me, it just really bothered me. I, I hate Melisandre, two pieces. I don't want her in the what? show anymore. That's I really do. That's my girlfriend. Do. Oh, I'm so my sick. girlfriend. I've you don't want to hang out with me and my girlfriend? Since the beginning. I, know, okay. I, I thought okay. Danny's, because you're a Jorah person. I thought Danny was your thing. But, like, no, I just, I'm so tired of Melisandre. Enough already. Where's that other red priestess? There? Kenvara? Yeah, Kenvara. Kenvara. Bring me Kenvara back. At least she doesn't have the terrible track record that, the, that Melisandre <laughs> that we has. Know of, I mean, John, she led to a child getting burnt at the stake, for this God's sake. So I don't, I can't forgive this person at all, no matter how, no matter how they're trying to redeem her on the show. Uh, yeah. uh, forget her. Uh, but I, what, 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 what I thought was interesting, though, is when Danny, once again, we get this, it really bothers me. Danny's getting a little too cocky. She says, we'll bring Jon Snow and have him bend the knee. Listen, <laughs> you've made some mistakes too there, Danny. Let's have a little perspective. Yeah. Let's be strong, but you don't have to be dismissive. And I think there's a little bit of dismissiveness there in that moment. Yeah. And John is just as powerful, having come up. Didn't she just learn from Varys? And by the way, that was great, where Varys was like, mm -hmm. well, didn't you try to do this? And yeah. she said, well, you, yeah. you've come yeah. to us at the right day. time. <laughs> Which is day we're off we're, rebates. We're <laughs> handing out forgiveness today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. But yeah, but this whole thing may come to its, may come to a head because if she doesn't receive John in the way that, you know, because John's taking a chance to come there because yeah. of what I thought, what they're saying about her relationship to her father. Like, there's a lot of trepidation. And they, the show, this episode, made a really, really powerful uh, 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 point of, make, of, of putting that out there, that it is her relationship to her father is, is something that people will consider in this Absolutely. whole uh, scenario, in this whole scene. And next week, we're going we're gonna to talk about it here in a second here, but next week we're going to get this fantasy meetup that I think fans have been waiting for since the mid-90s. Mm. Jon Snow and Daenerys Targaryen in the same room, and that is gonna be our Stardust question of the week. Download the Stardust app and get it on iOS and Google. Go on there and give us an answer. Follow all of us, we're on Stardust, and let us know what you think's gonna happen when Danny and Jon finally meet 20-some years later that we've been waiting for a long time. What's going to happen? Let us know on Stardust, and we have more of your reactions. This is how simple it is. You press the record button, you put it up to your face, and you talk, and you react, and you tag Game of Thrones, and we'll find it. Here's what we got right now. Hey, guys. Sansa Stark here. Ugh, no, just kidding. It's time for Game of Thrones, episode two, 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 two. You got my Game of Thrones Targaryen shirt on? Uh, and that's awesome because this was a super heavy Targaryen episode. The scene with Daenerys and everyone around the table, I thought that was the most exciting because it was kind of the coming together of everything. The first major battle of the Battle for the Seven Kingdoms happened tonight on the Game of Thrones. Holy hell did we get the battle of all sea battles. About that ship battle. That was a nice ship battle. Okay, so how is it possible that Daenerys and all of her allies did not realize that there was this giant fleet of a thousand ships hanging around between Dragonstone and King's Landing. Deaths that I didn't see coming right away happened. My emotions are all over the place after this episode. Oh, but the ending though, oh well, I guess it's bye-bye, Sand Snakes. In happier news after this episode, Hot Pie! Hot Pie came back! <laughs> That's it, it's that simple. You get these great reactions. You guys are killing it with the reactions on Stardust. You can find it again on iOS and Google Play. And we're on it. Follow us, react along with us, and let us know what's going to happen when John and Danny finally meet. And John Roca, you had some great stuff before that about what's, what, what's possibly going to happen and the risk yeah. that this is for Jon Snow. Yeah, it's a, it's a big risk, right? I mean, once again, here he goes making these bold moves. And to his credit, this is what speaks to his leadership. He does make these bold moves. They don't always 100% work out for his life, right. but he does make these moves that are powerful. And he's going against his counsel. Again, even Lady Mormont this time goes against him. Oh, when Leanna turns yeah, when on Leanna you, turns you, got, on, yeah. ooh, you got a risk. You got to really think about the situation, right? But once again, what did I say? Sansa is the power. No, you leave Sansa in charge. That's the right move. Yeah. Leaves her in charge. I love the Taylor Swift reaction. What? Me? Oh my God, me? <laughs> you know, I love that reaction. But you know inside, she knows she's the right choice to be in charge here. And I, and I love that. But John's hot-headedness. Once yeah. again, this whole situation with Littlefinger, him turning and choking him. Yes, we may enjoy this as him defending his sister's honor. We get it. But it may not be the wisest move because Littlefinger, just like Varys, always finds a way out of these situations, always manipulates his way into the situation. And a lot of people have said the Game of Thrones may actually be Varys versus Littlefinger. Right. And how ironic that they may actually be coming together now against Cersei if things work out the way they do. But he's got to do, Jon's got to do this. You know, he's going with uh, Sir Jor, uh, with uh, uh, Davos. Sir yeah. Davos, rather. He's going over there to meet up with Danny, and we'll see what happens in that situation. He needs the Dragonglass. So there's an ulterior motive to this situation, right. but leaving some 
Sansa in charge, I think, is a smart move, and I think it will. We will see if Sansa yeah. is a better leader than Jon. And Davos calling for the dragon. Yeah, which Davos is calling for the fan stuff. Right. Yeah, and this, and this this callback, you have Ned, uh, uh, the, call, the, the the invoking Ned. Uh, yeah. Ned choked Baelish in season one. Yeah. When Baelish was like, I I, I gotta, you know, I got Catelyn, trust me, and then now he's, I love your sister. <laughs> you choke. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Dennis, uh, this is a risk for Jon. Yeah. Davos is is saying what we fans have been saying since episode one. Once or once you learn there's dragons, well, dragons can burn the White Walkers. Mm-hmm. I love that this kind of that meta moment. Is this is this going to pay off for John? Well, that's the thing. Is like as us as viewers, we watch this thing. And we know that that the intentions that Danny and Tyrion have are are on the up and up. Yeah. Where where for him it is a big risk because mm. from his perspective perspective it's like, well, this is someone we've never come across. She's a Targaryen. The last Targaryen was crazy. The fact that Tyrion is there is is helping because yeah. mm-hmm. he trusts Jon Sno- yeah. Snow, so he's the one who convinces Danny to send that raven for him. And then because Jon Snow knows Tyrion, he leaves that last line: "All dwarves are bastards in their father's eyes." Yeah. yeah, he knows it's him, and he's sending him a message like, "Hey, look, trust me on this." Winking. So, yeah, he's winking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so, so that's the thing is is because there's Tyrion there now. I don't expect the, the, the meeting to go quite as smoothly once they get there. There's going to be some tension there. There's going to be some drama. Who knows? Tyr- Tyrion may be called away or he gets sick or something like that. He yeah. can't be there to broker some sort of <laughs> negotiation. He took a personal day yeah, yeah, today. Exactly. He's out of the office. He's yeah, working yeah, from home. Yeah. Then he had to do his taxes at yeah. home. Um, so we know something like that is going to happen. But it's going to be a great moment once we see Jon Snow and Daenerys. I mean, is he yeah. going to bend the knee? Yes. Like when he comes in the hall, she's sitting on that throne. Is he going to bend the knee or is he going to be like, look, I'm king of the north. We're yeah. here to, we're equals. Let's negotiate. It seems like he might be willing to give up that kingship. But Rachel, someone else is going to be kind of minding that throne up in the north. And I think Baelish is happy that his little favorite Sansa, he's the one. Sansa may have been Taylor Swift in it, but Baelish was yeah. in the corner going, uh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> Rachel. What do we have? Somebody else in the corner was also very excited about, and that was Brienne. We only got one shot That's of her true. this oh, episode, yes. but I loved the smile on her face yeah. when John very sincerely said he was leaving the, his people yeah. in the North in good hands and that yeah. those were Sansa's. Um, I'm confused by Peter this season so far. Now I know we're only two episodes in right. and I he he's falling on his old tricks like his trying to feel out John because they've never had a conversation before. Yeah, right. But their con- his, even says it. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and that's We'd the never point. Talk. But but I, I mean, wanted to follow you into the crypts. Following to talk. you into the crypts <laughs> is mistake number 1. Right. Yeah. Um mentioning that you're the one who brought Ned's bones back, I don't think was a very smart move. And like he was doing all the things we've seen Littlefinger do all this time, but they didn't work against Sansa last week. And I don't really know mm. what made him think that his sort of like weasel-like thing was going to work with John this week mm. either. Like he's been observing John. It just it didn't seem to me that smart. But we know it's Littlefinger. We know it's Game of Thrones. So we know that there's something up his sleeve. And with John leaving to go to Dragonstone, now he's in a position to to make a move. And yeah. I'm curious to see what that move's going to be. Yeah. I really wanted that crip scene to be more about the fact that we're pretty sure Littlefinger knows about John's yeah. real parentage. Mm. And I wanted a bigger hint there, um, and which also leads me to my big question about John going to meet Danny is Bran was not in this episode. John is still yet unaware of his parentage. Mm-hmm. So he's going to meet a Targaryen. He's a Targaryen but doesn't know it. Mm-hmm. And I had assumed that when they finally met this season that he would be going having that information. So I think yeah. it's really, mm-hmm. the dynamic is going to be very interesting without that being on the table for their meeting we, we next could, week. We could get something next week where Bran's like, hey, here, I hear, hear you heading down. I got a right. little, <laughs> little information <laughs> for you. Yeah. There's another yeah. like uh, happenstance meeting on the road. Hey, Bran, and like, yeah. you know, <laughs> by the way, got this whole three-eyed raven download, and um, you're not Ned Stark's son. So yeah, th- I think, but that's, that's the really interesting thing. And in terms of John's you know, leadership abilities and and versus Mm -hmm. Sansa's and whatnot, their dynamic is, it's my favorite of the season. Like, I just love that they're both right. Mm -hmm. And they're Mm -hmm. both staunchly, you know, believe that they're right, but that they can still have the conversations and are still weighing the risk. And John thinks the risk is worth it. She doesn't, but they have to respect each other's opinions on that. And John says to everybody, even though they all say, you shouldn't do this, Bronze John Royce, Robeck Glover, Lyanna Stark, uh, Leonor Mormont, they all say 
this is a bad idea. You're abandoning your people. You're abandoning mm -hmm. the North. Rob did this, and he ended up dead. Lost the king. But John the says the thing is the bottom line thing is I've seen the army of the dead, and you all haven't. Mm -hmm. And I'm weighing the risks involved here on a different way than you are because I have seen that, and the risk is worth it in this moment, even though we all, all we know about her is that she's the mad king. Uh, King's daughter. Mm -hmm. So he <laughs> thinks the risk is worth it. They might not, but he's the king. He didn't want it. He didn't ask for it. They gave it to him, and this is how he's leading. Absolutely. So as we close here, John, yeah. we talk about the stubbornness of the Starks yeah. and the fire of the Targaryens mm -hmm. mixed in our beloved Jon Snow. <laughs> this is something I think he has to do. I agree with Rachel. He's seen the Night King, mm -hmm. not just a Funko Pop exclusive <laughs> that Dennis and I got. The Night King is real. What do we think as we close, guys? What's going to happen next week? What's John going to do? Is this going to work out smooth? No. Nothing ever <laughs> works out smooth for John, right? It's never, he's never, he's taking the hardest path to leadership ever. And the, what Rachel bring us, mm. brings up at the end here is true. I never wanted to be king. This is an essential thing for him to say. I never right. wanted it. You guys put it on me. I took it and I took the mantle, but you, I never wanted to be king. And that, there's a looseness to that. There's a freedom within that that lets mm -hmm. him do certain things like this that risks his leaders. Most kings would not put themselves in this position. They'd send someone else to try to be the emissary yeah. and do whatever. So I don't think it's going to work out well for John, but I think, I think it's great because we get to see what sounds is going to be like his leader and having Brienne, having other people there, having Baelish there, seeing what his motivations are. So oh, yeah. all of that to me leaves, leaves me with an excitement here. And I don't know if they'll do it next episode. Maybe it'll be the episode after because they have other stories like, lines they need to play with. But who knows? We'll see, we'll see yeah. how it turns out. And uh, I'm curious to see when Arya, if she comes yeah. back and is, oh, hi, Baelish. I got some things to tell yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Dennis, <laughs> what do we got next week? Well, yeah, I talked about with Jon Snow and Danny, but I think the more interesting thing is, is Sansa being left in charge. Yeah. We know that her, her intentions are noble, but we also know that we have Peter Bellish whispering yeah. in her ear. And she may be doing things that, that Jon Snow wouldn't agree with. And, and let's see how far that goes. How long has he gone for? And he's right to go in the sense of he knows that this is the queen. She's not going to take just an emissary. He's mm. got to go there and talk to her yeah, himself. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't think that's going to go quite as smoothly as, as we would hope. But then also nothing at Winterfell is going to go as smoothly as, as, right. as we hoped either. I, I, I think Sansa is going to have trouble because remember, even though we know her part in in the Battle of the Bastards, really the the Bannerman they don't really know and they don't really care. To them, mm -hmm. Jon Snow is the face, right. uh, uh, the guy who won this battle, this un, this insurmountable odds. He's the poster child. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think she's going to run. She, she's a woman. This is Westeros, so they're you know they're not going to respect her like uh, they mm -hmm. would would a man. So. She's going to run into some of that, some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's going to be a, a lot of drama is going to happen up in Winterfell. Absolutely. Winterfell might be the place to be, Rachel. Definitely. I mean, this this is this will be when Peter feels like he can make his move yeah. because he made no inroads with John whatsoever. Mm -hmm. In fact, he got like a, a, a choking for his efforts mm -hmm. in the crypts. So mm -hmm. this is where whatever plan he's got going on is going to be put in motion. And this is where Sansa is going to be the test tested. She hasn't mm -hmm. been tested like this before. She probably is going to get pushback from the Lords of the North. They didn't vote her queen. They voted John King. And even though he said she's in charge, I don't know what she's going to implement being in charge. Will she countermand anything that John set in motion? Will she, because she's looking south, John's looking north. We know that that's still an aspect. Mm -hmm. And that also carries over into what Danny and John will be talking about. They both agreed to meet, but they have very different goals with this meeting. Like yeah. Danny wants an army of the north to come to her aid for the Iron Throne. John wants Danny's dragon glass and dragons and help in the north. I don't think he's going to bend the knee because, mm -hmm. A, I don't think he would ever bend the knee to somebody that didn't earn it. And I think that, that just because she's Daenerys Targaryen isn't going to be a reason enough for him. Right. And she's not going to blindly, you know, let him mine her, her, her dragon glass for something, a threat that she knows nothing about. She's focused on the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, this meeting is not going <laughs> to not go well. Not going to go well, but this show went well today. My final prediction for the entire series, Nymeria ascends to the Iron <laughs> Throne, and a dire wolf is on top. I want to thank you all for coming. Rachel, where can they follow you? They can find me at Rachel J. Cushing on all social media platforms. 
The great John Roca. Yeah, you guys can always find me at The Roca Says on Twitter and Instagram. See all the shows I'm hosting and co-hosting there. Absolutely. Dennis Zen. You can find me on Twitter at Pink here on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and you can follow me on Stardust. Absolutely. Follow all of us on Stardust as well. You can follow me at Catnapsuck. I talk Game of Thrones daily. You can follow me there and react to us. <laughs> Download the Stardust app and give us your thoughts, reactions, and tell us what will happen when John and Danny, 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 finally meet. <laughs> that is it. Episode 2 in the books. We'll see you next week for Collider's Thrones Talk. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.